thank you very much for joining me again. Hopefully you've liked my previous video where we actually configured the MIM sync service and the MIM service and portal. What I wanted to do in this video is kind of give an explanation of what was happening when I was doing those run profiles. MIM and even FIM can be very confusing as far as what's happening at any given time. So I'm going to try in some of these bonus videos to kind of show what's happening and give an explanation. I'll just in the main series go over the actual configuration process. So I've hashed up a little drawing here real quick of Active Directory, the MIM Sync service, and the MIM service and portal. Each of them with their respective databases. So when we started the install, this is what we had. Something we really haven't talked about or I had mentioned just very briefly is the metaverse. The metaverse is where everything is stored once it's synchronized. So let's actually start by going over the process of a full import. So we have our data sources, Active Directory. Inside of the, that data source, we have a user, Jim Todd, which his username is M. Todd. So the first thing we did was a full import. And what happens in that process is it takes all the objects and imports them into a connector space. So the connector space of AD will then get M. Todd with first name and last name and all the attributes. The full import actually takes everything in your Active Directory containers that you've selected. Only until you run a full synchronization does the synchronization rule go through and move the objects and attributes that you select into the metaverse. And creating objects into the metaverse is called projecting creating objects in data sources are called projecting as well. So what happens in reverse? Well, when we go and export from the metaverse to the MIM data source, we don't go to the connector space. We go directly to the data source. Only until we do a full import does the connector space receive what is in the data source? Now, what happens when someone goes in and changes, say inside of the FIM service database, someone changes an attri attribute? The process is very similar. We do a full import and the data source is imported into the connector space. But when we do a full synchronization, the metaverse attribute values are different than what's in the connector space. That's where attribute flow precedence comes into play. So if we look at the metaverse designer underneath person, because that's the object, we see each of the attributes and their import flow count. 
So if we click on the attribute and go to configure attribute flow precedence, we see the precedence order. Now we have two management agents in here, but we only see our SB-AD management agent. Well, that means that there is no inbound flow for account name on the other management agents. It only shows the management agents that have an inbound flow of the attribute. So the order is AD is first. So it's the preference. So what's going to happen is on the full synchronization, it's going to look at the attributes precedence. So in this case, precedence of one is Active Directory. So it's going to say, I need to export the username again to make this correct. So when it exports, it's going to replace the MT with MTOD in this case. And then when we do a full import, we're going to get the username from the data source. So hopefully this kind of gives you a little explanation of what's happening when we're doing a full import and a full sync and an export. In some of these later videos, I'm going to actually go into detail of what happens in a Delta synchronization process. But this doesn't change all that much. It just changes in some instances. I'll probably also go over what happens when we have multiple attribute flows and doing an equal precedence, but that's for later on. So I want to bring this back up here for the outro, but thank you very much. Hopefully you liked this video. Hopefully it was informative. If you did like it, hit my little bitty thumbs up button. You can subscribe to me as well. Uh, add comments down in the comment section. You know, let me know what you're thinking of the video. Let me know what you've seen. Uh, ask questions and I'll try and get to them. But anyways, thank you very much and hope to see you in the next video.